This video was sponsored by Desi. So I absolutely love when my son comes out to the shop and asks me to build him something or asks me to help him build something. And we've built a lot of cool stuff. We've built, you know, different sort of guns and trucks and rocket launchers and catapults and small stuff. But the other day he said, Dad, I really want a tree fort. And I feel like as a dad, it's my duty to build this for him. But there's one problem. I've never done any sort of construction in my entire life. I'm great at building furniture. I don't know how to build a structure. I've never framed anything. I don't know about foundations. Zero. So here I am on my computer trying to research how in the world do you frame a building? What kind of footings you need? What is a footing? How do you make one of those? This video is gonna be interesting. I'm bringing you guys along on this. It's gonna be a multiple part video series and you can watch me fail or figure this out. Really don't know what's gonna happen. And the other issue is we don't have any trees big enough on our property to even hold a house. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out too. Luckily Craig's here. Ha 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 ha. He knows nothing either. No. Let's get to work. We can do it. What's the worst that can happen? It'll fall over? What do you call that? That's a board. Oh. Yeah, like a piece of wood that's been milled down into a certain dimension. So yellow. Yeah, pine. Oh, pine. pine. I've heard of that. Yeah, two by four. So without knowing how to do anything, I did what a woodworker does, and that was get on SketchUp and start drawing something up. And this is what I came up with. Now, like I said, I've never framed anything. I know a little about framing just from being around job sites and having friends that are contractors. So we'll see how this goes. We don't have any trees, so this whole thing is going to have to be on stilts. No, these aren't our trees. These are the neighbor's trees. I'm going to push the whole thing right up against these trees, but I was a little worried that some of them might fall when it gets windy onto the treehouse. Yeah, kind of like that. So I talked to my neighbor and asked if I could take just a few of the more precarious ones down that would be in the danger zone of killing my son. And he was totally cool with that. So I had a friend of mine who's a sawyer come out with his chainsaw and zip zap zoop. They were gone. After my manly friend with the chainsaw left, I did the most dad thing I could possibly do, and that was pull out my riding lawnmower and set to work mowing a clear area so that we would have a, you know, a clear area to, to put the, the treeless treehouse thing. The next thing I needed to do was figure out some sort of concrete footer to set our posts for this stilted house on. Which would be really fun, considering I'm not sure I even know what a footer is. Okay, so... I gotta find some place that does concrete. See, you want all the concrete they have. I'll talk in an accent. Good morning, nice river. Hi, you guys um, sell concrete? We do. So I'm a little confused how this all works. I'm trying to build my son a tree house and I need to put some footings in, um, but I've never done any sort of concrete before. I mean, how do I... Let me, let me put you through to our salesperson. He can help you out. Oh, okay, you thank you so much, darling. I appreciate it. Hey. I don't know why, but when I talk in an accent, yeah. it makes it Self seems easier, yeah. Hello? Hi. Um, Hello there. I'm trying to figure out. I know nothing. Just going to start off by saying that. That's right. So maybe speak to me as if I'm a five year old when it comes to concrete. Let me double check it. I times 9 divided by 12. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's all right. Cool. Two weeks Two out? Weeks. <clears throat> We're going to have to mix this by hand. We could probably knock it out. And yeah, but how, how do we weeks. even get 90 bags? Yeah. Who's this? It's your mother. Mom, I can't talk right now. I'm having a crisis. 
After a few moments of crying that our project just got set back two weeks because of concrete, we decided to forget about that and just move forward. Now I marked out on SketchUp the center of all my footings, footers, whatever they're called. So I knew where they all needed to land. The trick was just to get them all laid out nice and square. Now I've used string lines in the past to lay things out like garden beds or planting trees around the property. So I thought, can't be that hard just to throw some string down and measure where each footer, footing, thing needs to go. So I just put a stake in the ground, measured out the distance between the outermost footers. I'm going with footers from here on out. And I hammered in another stake. Once I got my four outer posts in, I did what woodworkers do and I measured diagonally from corner to corner to check to see if it was square. I don't know if this is the thing you do in construction, but it works in building boxes, so why not? Once I was sure that my four corner posts were square to each other, I measured to the center in between each post, and I added another stake, because you need eight concrete footers for a 12 by 12 treehouse. I don't know if that's overkill, but I definitely don't want to underbuild this thing and find my son under a big pile of rubble. Once I had all my stakes in the ground, I used some of this fancy orange marking paint that I see the guys on the highway using, and I marked out where all my stakes were while the foreman drove around in his go-kart, observing from a distance. And then we started laying out stakes for this little side platform. Now in the original SketchUp drawing, I had this attached to the treehouse, but I decided that wasn't very much fun and I've always wanted to build a rope bridge. So I moved it out 15 feet away from the main structure. Next, it was time to dig some holes. And if you thought I was gonna dig them by hand, well, <laughs> you don't know me very well. Why dig them by hand when you can rent a skid steer with an 18 inch auger attachment? This is gonna be fun. And Ivor was pretty excited because I promised I'd let him drive. And I'm a good driver. Um, most of the time. So with my foreman in my lap, that's not something you hear every day. And the auger attachment hooked to the front of the skid steer, we started augering out some holes. This thing is so cool. It's kind of like a giant toy. It makes me want to build the world's largest doweled drawer. Use this to drill the holes and tree trunks as dowels. Maybe someday. I gotta stay focused. For now, I've got a bunch of holes to drill. Now, if I was to dig these all by hand, I would have been out here all day and then some. My back would have hurt. I would have been tired and mad and angry and sweaty and dirty and gross. But I rented this thing for, I think, $150 for four hours. And it only took me about an hour and 10 minutes to drill all the holes. And it wouldn't have taken that long except for the fact that we ran into a giant root and we had to cut it out with the Saza. But in no time, we managed to get all 13 of our holes drilled out for our footers, and it was time to go on to step two. Now, I didn't know what step two was until I looked on the internet. And apparently step two, when you're doing footers, is to add a foot to a foot and a half of packed gravel in the bottom of each hole. This is three quarter inch minus gravel to be exact. I have no clue what that means, but the person at the gravel yard said that's what I should use. And they also told me to use Craig to pack the gravel. So I started filling up the holes with gravel, you know, roughly measuring here or there, and Craig would tamp it down until he got tired of tamping and he started filling up the holes and I started tamping it down. Apparently you can buy like metal tamps to do this, but I didn't have one. So I just used this four by four piece of pressure treated lumber and it worked great. In no time, I had all the holes filled with gravel and Craig finished off with an interpretive dance. It was about that time that our first of what is going to be many lumber deliveries showed up, which is funny because we're nowhere near ready for the lumber yet. But with the lumber was some sonotubing. 18 inches in diameter. 
This is gonna make up the form for our concrete and allow us to get everything nice and neat and level, supposedly. Hey, now it might be a good time to explain why I got this thing on my head in case you're wondering. I mean, if you noticed in previous videos, you might've seen that I've always had my ears gauged. Well, that was a decision I made when I was a younger kid because I thought it made me look cool and hip and fly. And you know, it did to some extent. But then as I got older, I thought maybe I don't want my ears gauged anymore. But the only way to ungauge your ears is to have surgery to get them fixed. So I did that. So kids that are thinking about mutilating your body because it looks cool. Let me ask you, does this look cool? Well, actually it kind of does look cool. Like the layered look looks pretty neat because they got like the multiple levels and the, anyways, that's beside the point. That's why I got my ears covered up. All right, back to the treehouse. Next, I needed to cut this sauna tube to the right length and slide it into all those holes I just dug. Well, the holes that the skid steer dug. Well, the holes that Ivor dug on the skid steer while I fell asleep. Anyways, I measured all of the sauna tube and I cut it to length, cutting each piece anywhere between 30 to 36 inches. Now I say 30 to 36 because the holes in the back are actually a little bit lower than the holes in the front. So I was gonna cut those sauna tubes a little bit longer than the ones in the front to try and get everything somewhat level. And then I'll come through and make it perfectly level after I get it all in place. But you'll see what I mean here. Just trust me, I don't know what I'm doing. So with that level of confidence, I just kept cutting and cutting and shoving tubing into holes hoping this was somewhat what you're supposed to do i mean i did a google search so i'm pretty much an expert at this point and in no time all my tubes were in place that evening after it started to get dark i came out and i put a laser level on all of my tubes and started cutting them down I had to wait until it was almost dark because the laser level I bought on Amazon was pretty cheap and not very powerful, and it wouldn't show up until it wasn't sunny. Quality tools at a quality price. Amazon. I wasn't quite sure how to cut these either, so I just grabbed a multi-tool and it worked great. Now, according to Wikipedia, the next step is to take some rebar and make some little rebar square things to put in the bottom of each hole. So I bought some rebar and I bought these cool little wire things that you hook the rebar together with. I think they're called bar wire, maybe. Anyways, they got two loops, one on each end. I just put a hook inside my drill, put it through each loop and twisted and voila they're hooked together. Now all I had to do is the same exact thing to every single corner and I've made my very own tic-tac board. No, really, this goes in the bottom of the footer. I think, according to the pictures I saw in the Google image search, it, it looked right. And then next to the rebar they had these cool plastic feet at Home Depot that you stick on the bottom of the rebar and this sits it up off the bottom of your gravel so that it floats just a little bit in the concrete. I really don't know what this rebar is supposed to do. I mean, I'm sure it gives it some sort of added structural strength because it said that you're supposed to do this. I just don't know enough about this process to tell you why you're supposed to do this or why you have to stick your head down in a large tube to get the job done. After I had all my squares and all my tubes, I decided to hammer in just a few more pieces of rebar going vertical. Again, I'm pretty sure I saw something like this on a Google image search, so it's gotta do something. And with that, believe it or not, I think we might be ready for concrete. Maybe. Hey, guess what? This video is sponsored by... Vessies. Vessies are shoes that are made of Dimatex. 
Dyma Tex. It is a dual climate material, so it keeps you cool in the summer, keeps you warm in the winter. And here's the really cool part. It doesn't feel like it should be waterproof. But guess what? It totally is. So I'm gonna take these outside. I'm gonna test them out, pour some water on my feet and see if my socks stay dry. Because people say things are waterproof all the time and I'm not gonna believe it until I try it. So let's go. This is Vessi Shoes Waterproof Test 1. I've got my Vessi shoes, I got a hose, and I start spraying. And you know the water is just beading off of these shoes, like it's afraid of them. Like they stole their lunch money back in elementary school. But I won't know for sure if this worked until I take these shoes off and give my socky socks the old finger test. Hey! This is dry! But they do not smell good, that's my feet's problem. Whew. Well, color me impressed. They really do keep your feet completely dry. So here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Check the link in my video description right down there. And if you use the coupon code Bourbon Moth, you get $25 off each pair of Vessi's shoes. So click that link, go get yourself some. I'm totally gonna to rock these in the garden and my feet won't be wet. And then my wife's not gonna be like, hey, who's walking in the house with her wet socks? That doesn't happen. Well, sell my beans and call me Jackie. Is that a saying? Sounds like it should be a saying. Anyways, my point is, we got a call from the Concrete Company and they were ready to roll five days after we originally placed our order. Now, if that's not service, I don't know what is. So, this giant truck drove out into my pasture and this guy handed me a piece of paper as if I'm supposed to know what to do with that. And I really hoped these guys would somewhat know what they were doing because I hadn't a clue. But luckily, they took over and started filling all my holes with concrete. Um, the holes in the ground, my the sauna tube, they filled all the sauna tube up with concrete. And then I poked it with this metal fence post that was laying around. In my brain, I thought maybe that would help get out some air bubbles, possibly and they didn't tell me to stop so i just kept on poking it and while i was doing that i also explained to my son that this is the proper way to do concrete because that's what dads do they lie to their children now when it comes to the finishing of concrete i actually do have a little experience but only ever with concrete countertops inside a house so I just grabbed the same tools I use for concrete countertops, a screed, and I smoothed off all the excess concrete. A shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. A shake, shake, shake. I mean, this is how you do countertops, the back and forth screeding method. I mean, concrete's concrete, right? And then you smooth it all out. Now I'm not gonna use a magnesium float or anything crazy like that on this because it doesn't have to be pretty. It's all gonna be shoved under a treeless treehouse. I mean, if it had to be pretty, you really think I would have let the foreman work on it? I mean, look at that form. <laughs> this guy obviously doesn't know what he's doing. But he sure is darn cute. And in the end, he got the job done just fine. That is after I came in and cleaned it up for him, obviously. Now, when we did the math to figure out how much concrete we would need, we almost got it perfect. We were off by just about that much. But when in doubt, grab some concrete blocks and just shove them in there to bring that concrete level up to the top of your sauna tube. I'm sure this is definitely up to, you know, standard building code. And once you push it down with my pokey fence post, <laughs> you can't even tell that we didn't quite have enough concrete to fill every tube. And with that, all of our footers were poured. Next, I wanted to really make the space look cool, like an actual playground. So I called my neighbor, Brandon. He's got a tractor and he's gonna let me borrow it. He also thought it was ridiculous that I had 13 footers for a kid's treehouse. Anyways, and I got a bunch of railroad ties and I decided to try and do a border of railroad ties around the entire perimeter and then fill the center with wood chips. I got one railroad tie in place, and then my wife brought me some fresh baked sourdough bread with butter. 
But after a quick snack break, I got back to work and I managed to wrestle almost all the other railroad ties into place. I would have got all of them in place, but we couldn't fit that many in one truckload. So Craig's actually at the store right now getting more railroad ties and a nice air conditioned truck while I'm here lugging these around by myself. It's weird, he's my employee, but somehow I seem to be doing all the hard work. Just about the time I ran out of railroad ties, a big truck full of wood chips showed up. Now I had to call around a few places to find the exact same wood chips that they use on playgrounds. I wanted the real deal, the authentic scrape your knee up, get splinters in your hand wood chips that I remember from when I was a kid. My son deserves those memories. 20 yards is what I ordered, and they assured me that'd be enough to fill up the area I wanted with between four to six inches of wood chips. About that time, Craig showed up with the remaining railroad ties we needed to complete our border. But there was a few things we needed to do before we started pouring wood chips. First, I needed to remove the cardboard sauna tubing off of all of the concrete footers. So I just cut a little slit with my multi-tool. Yes, I did destroy this blade on all that concrete and Craig came around and peeled off the concrete. In no time we had them all stripped clean and they were looking, well, I really don't know how they're supposed to look. They look good to me. Then before we covered the whole area with wood chips, I wanted to bury some electrical conduit. Now don't freak out and think that I'm trying to add full electricity to this treehouse. I'm not but I do want a way that I can get power out there should my son want to spend the night out there and have a light or something like that. So the solution that's easiest is an extension cord. But I didn't want an extension cord running over the top of the bark chips that kids could trip over and, you know, that sort of thing. So I decided just to bury some conduit just under the surface of the bark chips and I'll just eventually run an extension cord through there and all I'll have to do is plug the treehouse in when I want electricity out there. Pretty simple. So I ran a string through the conduit after I glued it up so that I can pull a cord through later. I added some 90 degree elbows on either end. Well, I added two 45s to equal 90 because it's a softer slope. And boom. Just like that, we had some buried conduit and an easy way to run an extension cord out there without kids tripping all over it. This will pop up just outside the railroad type border where eventually I'll add a waterproof box that'll house the plug-in for the extension cord. With that all buried and covered up, it was time to add our weed barrier. I wanted to put a weed barrier down because, well, if I didn't, there'd be weeds in the wood chips. I mean, why else would you put a weed barrier down? I feel like that's pretty obvious. Don't need to explain it. Anyways, originally in my head, I thought we'd cover the entire thing in weed barrier and then cover the whole thing in wood chips. But the more I thought about it, that would mean that I would have to drive the tractor on top of the weed barrier. And even though we got a pretty heavy duty weed barrier, I wasn't confident that the tractor wouldn't rip holes in the barrier if we drove on top of it and I didn't want that to happen. So we decided to just do a row or two of the weed barrier and then add wood chips and then do a row or two and then add more wood chips and so on and so forth. You get the picture. And with each row we had to cut around our concrete footers, which is actually pretty satisfying. This is like some giant art project. I would cut around the footers and then Craig would come back with these little weed barrier staples and push them through, anchoring the weed barrier to the ground and holding it in place. I think there's a good chance that weeds are still going to grow in these wood chips, but at least their roots will be really shallow and should be pretty easy to pull out. So with two layers of the weed barrier down, I grabbed the tractor and started dumping wood chips and a little grass. It was hard not to scoop up grass with the wood chips. And after each scoop I dumped, Craig would take the rake and smooth them out. And we just kept going back and forth. Grabbing chips, dumping them, smoothing them out. Grabbing chips, dumping them, smoothing them out. Thank God for my neighbor Brandon and the use of his tractor. 
I see a couple bottles of bourbon in his future. It didn't take long to get into a pretty good rhythm of smoothing out bark dust, laying down weed barrier, and plopping on some wood chips. I even convinced the foreman to come drive the tractor for me so I could take a little nap. And he did an okay job. I mean, let's face it, he's seven, so driving tractors is only something he's been doing for about two years where I've been doing it for a lifetime. But I will say, he's definitely getting the hang of it. Now, some might say that this whole wood chip border perimeter is a little overkill for a treehouse. And to that, I would have to say, you are 100% correct. You see, my son asked me to build him a treehouse, and I'm not the type of person that's just gonna throw a few boards together, slap it inside of a small Charlie Brown pine tree, and say, there you go, kid. If my son asks for a treehouse, he is gonna get a flippin' treehouse. And this thing's really twofold, because when he turns 18 and has to move out of the house, well, at least he won't have to move too far. He can just go sleep out in the treehouse. In no time, we had the last scoop of wood chips in place. We used every single bit of that 20 yards. In fact, we probably could have used just a bit more. And Craig was tired. I don't know why. Didn't even do that much today. Well, maybe we got a little work done, but part of me still feels like I just worked for an entire week just so that I could start working. The real fun is going to be when this thing goes vertical. And to see that, you'll have to stick around for the next episode in the treeless treehouse build. Are they footers or footings? Oh, man, I am exhausted. <laughs> And I feel like I haven't even started yet. A week's worth of work just to be able to start building. If I was building a piece of furniture, I'd be done already. Man, I gotta hand it to all those construction guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. This is just video one in who knows how many videos. I'm determined to keep working on this thing until I get it done and hopefully the foreman is gonna like it when it's all finished. Because if he doesn't, well, he might have to live out there. No, I'm just joking. He's gonna love it. Follow along, check the link down below for, I don't know, there's probably some stuff down there. There's a link to our Patreon if you wanna support the channel that way. You get behind the scenes footage and coupon codes and weekly live YouTube question and answer sessions. Anyways, check that out. I'm gonna go take a nap and take some ibuprofen. Oh.